as, as a, another sort of cross-campus initiative, um, GIFS has been working with many partners to develop a, an initiative with, um, with Bangladesh um, around sustainable food security. And um, um, at the heart of that also is um, sharing and exchanging technology and technology transfer as, as part of, the, of, of that overall um, goal. And we've moved on to the point where we have quite a number of people from different parts of, of the campus, not, not just the university, but in, in, the, in the federal bodies and, and also places like the Food Development Centre, all, all sort of involved in, in this. And um, we've, we've got four main research themes, as well as a, um, uh, an overarching technology centre. And, um, and, and this overall concept has reached the point of a, a high level of, of political support at, at sort of ministerial level, and, and even, even the name for our centre in Bangladesh has, has needed you know, the approval from um, uh, the Canadian Prime Minister as well. So these, these things are moving on and, and we've got a series of programmes and some of which relate very closely to the agenda we've been talking about here and the concept of joining, connecting the dots. And so just very quickly, these, these themes are around genomics and, and phenomics, around soil health and quality, um, around water, soil water regime and adaptation to um, um, to, to, to climate change, and, uh, and the fourth one, perhaps a bit less relevant today, post-harvest handling and processing. But three of those themes probably have very good connections into, into water, you know, whether that's in, in relation to, you know, water use efficiency, water management and irrigation, or, or drought, flood, salinity. Um, you know, one of the challenges in Bangladesh is, is is you know, too much water, too little water, the wrong sort of water, contaminated water from uh, depletion of groundwater resources and, and arsenic contamination and, and, and so on. So many of them, you know, water is, is there and food and, and livelihoods in general. And, you know, I was quite struck by, um, um, uh, I made a note, yes, Mar Margaret Holbert, um, you know, made the comment, you know, is climate change the defining problem that, that we're, we're, we're tackling here? And in, in many ways, I, I, I think it is what, what links the different themes. And why I wanted to say a little bit about this, this Bangladesh initiative is that I, I see it as a potential vehicle for us to take this sort of food and water theme on the campus and to help develop um, in particular, what we call theme three around uh, soil water regime and adaptation. And there's been some discussions already and, and some joint work between the Global Institute for Water Security and the Global Institute for Food Security around this. But there's clearly a potential for us to bring in more people. And today is not the time to talk about the, the, the detail of, of, of this at all. But, um, why, why I mention it particularly is that because this initiative has momentum and, and even some pump priming funding is, is very close to being uh, approved, um, we, we, we have a, an opportunity to, to do something which can both draw on the sort of spirit of, of this connecting the dots discussion, add to this particular Bangladesh initiative, um, and, and if you like, um, secure the synergies and the potential synergies we've heard about from, from many people of, of a multidisciplinary approach to tackling these, these problems. And um, so what I'd like to suggest is not a, you know, a detailed discussion about this today, because I, I, think, I think that would be too much. But I, I think it would be good to try and get a, um, a, a follow-up discussion of uh, a subset of, of people where this particular theme around um, soil and water and adaptation uh, can draw on some of the contributions from today and perhaps to invite, in, invite some of the people that, um, you know, sadly I haven't heard, heard speak, but 
know, those of you that have been here all the time can, can identify them and get us in a room together and to start to um, come up with something. Because my, my final comment here would be the, 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 the purpose, why, why are we having this workshop? Because we want to achieve something. We want some tangible outcomes ultimately. And, and we want to, you know, liberate, you know, the, uh, and pull together the, 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 the potential impact of, of the campus working more closely together. And, uh, and I think this is just one vehicle, I think. And, and, and because it's, it has a global impact, so it's, it's obviously relevant to global water and global food institutes, but, but the university, you know, aspires to be the world, the, univers the, the university the world needs sort of thing. So it, it's got that global um, you know, um, ambition. And, and here we have uh, a real world need around um, some of the urgent issues around food and climate change and water um, that uh, I, I think we collectively can make a, a bigger contribution to. So it was really just to create that awareness, um, um, Leon. Some, some people have mentioned it, I think, as you said, and, and some will be aware, but, but uh, we haven't spoken in great detail about it um, um, yet. Great, there. thanks, Steve. Um, so, uh, you know, I think Dave and I had a, a few things to present just to kind of get the ball rolling. We know this is not a, a group of shy people. There's lots of people that have lots of good ideas. So we just want to, you know, get get the ball rolling and get the discussions going. And what we hey, uh, uh, Leon. Yeah. Am I just being on the Bangladesh stuff just a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah. We, Go uh, ahead. Yeah. yeah I sure. mean, uh, you don't need to change. You don't need to change the screen or anything. Right. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, I mean, I don't think we made it clear that a bunch of us went, right? So a bunch of people from the Institute and from, from both Institutes went in, uh, I guess it was February. Right. So it was like yeah. sort of right around before we realized the, vi the virus was a thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it. Uh, from the province that was but separate but happening at the same time the ag delegation the ag minister was there um, so um, you know there's a lot of pathways to to plug in uh, to you know to the initiative and so yeah I think you're absolutely right Steve we should I think a, it's a no no brainer we pull up you know a, a definite outcome from this workshop will be a, a, a Bangladesh you know specific workshop about what's going on and you know, bring in new people, that sort of stuff. So, so it was really, really positive. And I don't know, then we hit COVID and, you know, here we are. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I, I did add a couple more things about that meeting is, you know, uh, you know, we had both the institutes there and then a number of people, scientists from the university, from College of Ag, from, uh, from you know, in terms of post-harvest, also from AAFC and NRC. So, you know, again, like this, this meeting, you know, uh, this is not a use gifts uh, meeting or effort. This is across campus and across the both the university and the and the and the, and the affiliated uh, federal institutes. So, you know, what the, the best resources are there? There, uh, that's what we, we want to put together. So, um, and I would assume as we build, if we get if we do it right, it'll we'll we'll be linking with other other universities and institutes too. Ultimately, that would be you know getting ahead of myself a little, but that certainly would would be one of the measures of success. So yeah, thanks, Jay. Yeah, it was good to mention that. It was an interesting meeting. That's where Jay and I really met each other. And uh, I I came with him. He ran up the, the, what is it, theme three on water it was him and Palash and 40 Bangladeshi hydrologists and, and ag engineers, et cetera. And I was the one plant person that, uh, um, drove them crazy talking about all the things we can do with plants and plant at the plant water interface. So, but overall, so, so Leon, really, there really was just positive. one other. Yeah, there was one other thing I, I just want to I, I forgot to mention, and you know, on the back of all, all these activities have been going on, uh, you know, there's been various meetings um, stimulated around trade relationships as well, and and developing that that that's uh, attracting, you know, political support and interest. And, and one, the other thing I meant to mention was, 
you know, since we went, I think there's been this announcement of this this major investment in in um, in irrigation infrastructure. Now, I don't know a lot about this this project, as Jay and colleagues and others will. And I know there's been, you know, some mixed views about merits and parts parts of it. But in terms of, you know, here is a huge activity on on water management and you know in in the prairies, and there was a lot of water management issues in. In Bangladesh as well, and it and it just struck me that this was, you know, another one of those potential interfaces where uh, there, there there might be opportunities to uh, to, to leverage that that um, in investment. So uh, I, I'm speaking with a, a limited degree of knowledge, uh, but uh, I the fact that there is this massive investment, um, I think would yeah. Attract so uh, so uh, yeah, I mean it's a, it's an, another obvious low hanging fruit, and and we already started talking about it before you got on, Steve, and it's it's okay. been mentioned a few times uh, in the past couple of days. So we actually did a preliminary study right after, or actually before the announcement, um, and I can't remember the timing. I guess we delivered a report. So this must have been in the fall and before we went to uh, Bangladesh. So uh, and that was our cross campus initiative, we had about 30 people out here back when we could still meet face to face. This was for WED. Uh, and uh, anyway, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of science to be done when we think about uh, uh, the scope of that activity, you know, what it means for water, what it means for agriculture, all the things that we don't know, it's very politically motivated. Yeah, let's go do this. Uh, and, you know, not a great amount of science or the science that's been done, you know, I haven't seen a lot of it. Water Security Agency gets upset when you say a lot of science hasn't been done, but we haven't seen much of it and they don't actually collaborate too much with us. Um, so anyway, a lot of science to be done, a lot of collaborative science to be done, collaborative uh, with ourselves, but also with the, with the agencies. Uh, all kinds of, you know, just all kinds of work can be done. So, and I think that we are uniquely, obviously, we are uniquely positioned, you know, in my opinion, I don't know that, it, that this is necessarily, so just speaking for the Institute, I think for, for the Water Institute, I think this is one of the reasons why we should exist. We should exist to provide the best available science to policymakers, or you know, one of the reasons for our existence is to provide that science that we're doing to help them make decisions. We don't have to say it's good, it's bad, but we can do all the scenarios and, and put together the best available models and really expand the capacity of the government agencies in ways that you know they don't have the they don't have the access to what we have access to. Dave. Uh, Jeff McDonald here. I just wanted to mention briefly that uh, I was on sabbatical when the Bangladesh water discussion was going on, but I have a, a recent PhD student I helped advise who's now faculty at North South University, and he does the soil water regime work using stable isotopes like I presented yesterday. Um, so that's a, a useful connection in that he's really working at the cutting edge with some of those tools, and I know has interest in some of these uh, Things that you were just describing, so I, I throw that out there. And now you're involved by extension. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, hey, Dave, did you uh, want to? You did that. You wrote this really nice summary from yesterday that you've shared with everyone, but I thought it might be useful to just hit the high points of the of, of your summary from the the first sure. day. A lot of it applies to the second day too, of course. It's. Uh, and some is more of the same with some different emphases, I think, on the second day. Right. Uh, Jay, did you want to start off by summarizing the slide that you sent yesterday, or do you want me to comment on that? Um, you can come, you can go ahead. I think it's pretty self okay. You know, I want to hear, I always like it when you explain stuff that I talk about because it sounds better when you say it. So go right ahead. <laughs> but this is something that, that we put together before we went to Bangladesh. I'm not sure we ever even pulled it out when we were there, but it definitely applies to what we've been talking about the last two days. Right. So, so this uh, slide, I think, reflects sort of the tech um, on the left hand or on the right hand side in black, really. Uh, describe some of the technical issues uh, related to mapping water in the in the in the in the root zone. Um, uh, the, this is obviously an issue because of the 
water use efficiency limitation of production in typical prairie environments, and the spatial distribution uh, really requires um, to be useful to, uh, to producers. We need, we need to be able to get fine scale information about variation in, in soil type and water availability. Um, but uh, what's available currently from satellites is, is a very limited depth uh, from microwave measurements from, from, uh, from satellites. Um, what, uh, was been, what's been proposed is to put up a P-band microwave system uh, to get uh, both deeper uh, in information about deeper layers, but also be able to get uh, finer scale uh, information that's uh, uh, gridded at a, at a scale relevant to, to producers. Um, so given that the, that unsaturated soil zone really is the food water nexus <laughs> physically realized, um, it makes sense to really focus on the characteristic there um, from soil science and nutrition management. Um, what I added to, to Jay's slide there in, in green is some of the topics that were discussed uh, on day one that were sort of uh, human factors, things that were under uh, human choices that affected the, the agro ecosystem and the, and the um, water uh, food nexus. So um, there's a lot of talk about um, ecosystem services. Um, the possibility of uh, uh, agronomic uh, improvements and plant breeding to develop uh, better water use efficiency. Um, the topic of uh, both water and nutrient stewardship came up. Um, I think that those are um, uh, sort of integrating ideas that, that might be the basis of a path forward. And certainly policy, economics, and more generally, um, community engagement also arose both on both days and, and represent really um, um, boundary conditions, if you will, for success. If we, if we can't get the policy right, if we can't get the economics right, um, and we can't effectively engage communities, whether they're Northern indigenous communities or, or, the, or the producer communities, um, we will not be able to succeed um, uh, in having impact in. Yeah, that's great. Summarize some of those some of those issues, and this this document will be be sent out. Um, I believe uh, Palash has got it on the on the uh, on the um, OneDrive site. But yeah, basically uh, one one thing that that really came out is that economic factors, especially maximizing yield, dominate uh, producer decisions. Um, and in order to make progress, we really need to have that as the bottom line for our for our activities, so that subject to that constraint, we need to be able to maximize productivity um, and incentivize um, progressive decision-making by those producers who would actually be, be the one in charge of, of management decisions. Um, likewise, um, other, other factors such as uh, valuing uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services really falls outside the usual transactional nature of the agribusiness model where people are focused on um, number of bushels and the price per bushel, um, and, and certainly that is a is a hurdle that we need to get over. Um, that is really not a technical thing, but we do have to find a way to um, engage both on the scientific level and on the policy level in order to, to really have an impact in, in the world. Um, uh, Steve uh, Vischer. Um, um, argued and, and others argued uh, convincingly to, to take really a, a systems approach to the plant soil water um, treated as a continuum. Um, the, the responsive plants, the, the heat and, and drought are very complex um, due to in, in field type settings and that really uh, complicates a, a, a quantitative scientific um, investigations at the level that would be needed to to unravel, for, for instance, gene, the genetic basis for, for, for phenotypes. So there's a need for activities at, at multiple scales. Um, and again, there's this continuing notion of integrating, of basically using maps to integrate data, look at spatial variations of water, nutrients, carbon, soil microbes, et cetera. 
that um, really, again, was a common theme that, that came out. And, and the, the, uh, the ugly business of, of measurement and modeling across scales is, is a, a continues to be a, a thorny uh, problem where, again, integrated work across um, groups, um, engaging mathematicians and statisticians who are perhaps not really directly represented here might be really very advantageous. Um, another thing that dominated the discussion on the first day is the importance of place. Um, should we select a, a small number of sites? If so, what would they look like? What are the trade-offs for for selecting various sites on the representative of a complex agroecosystem like, um, like in Saskatchewan and more generally in the prairie provinces. And I think the, the idea um, basically at the close of the discussion yesterday really focused on um, identifying uh, sites that were close to uh, the, the campus. Um, there are potential candidate sites and, uh, and that would allow um, sort of intensive work, um, but also more generally being able to have a network of, of, of sites that are more distributed, that would be more representative of the diversity of, of cropping systems and, and land types and, and, and crop types uh, would probably be very advantageous. But again, connecting it all with the GIS system so that we can uh, share information, share data, and add value, add leverage by, by cooperation. So that was sort of the end of uh, yesterday. For, for today, I had just a, a few notes that uh, I think mostly reinforce what was said yesterday. Um, there's certainly a, 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 a very large breadth of, of scales that, are, that were discussed today. Everything from atomic um, uh, in, uh, work at the synchrotron to planetary work from, from satellites. Uh, th that, that's an ongoing feature that, that, in, that connects many activities. Uh, the ongoing questions about human factors and community engagement, climate change and, the, and the, 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 the existing spatial temporal patterns for things like precipitation and temperature and how they might change. Okay, and I'll, I'll add to that. I missed, of course, a, a little, a little more than a third of the of the talks. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I agree. I mean, what came out today for me was really reinforcing a lot of the really interesting concepts, ideas, and surprises for me in some ways, um, and, and and the breadth of the work from the the social and economic, the role of energy, big data, you know, soil, water, measured with lots of different physics and, uh, approaches. And uh, but a couple of a couple of things that for me for the for the one and two thirds of the three uh, sessions I was at, one is you know make me uh, you know we have two unique resources that we're still underutilizing agriculture at this university, and one is the CLS and the other is the uh, cyclotron. We had some nice talks on the CLS today and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and the cyclotron we referred to, and again I want to find I know they both want to be more integrated into agriculture. And they've been doing a lot of agriculture work, but we, on the plant, right, there's a lot that could be done at the plant, soil, water, continuum using those, those unique resources that uh, most universities don't have. Um, so that was one thing. And, and another thing, and this is, I'm, maybe I'm, uh, it, it's in my backyard, but we did have more of the plant genomic type people speaking today, and I hope they gave uh, a sense of possibilities on the plant side for, you know, us being able to address, you know, you know, if, if the hydrologists say, gee, I wish we had plants that could do this, maybe we can do that now. We may have the tools to design crops for, for different uh, agro environments, uh, agro aquatic, hydraulic environments, et cetera. So those are the couple of things that, that stuck out for me. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, David, let me yeah. just add to that, Leon. So, so that was great. Um, always great to see, um, you know, what stuck out for uh, from different perspectives. For me, um, I really enjoyed because I'm a modeler, uh, really at heart, anyway. Um, really enjoyed the conversations that started looking at talking about the hydrology modeling, you know, starting with John this morning, 
uh, Martin's talk, uh, Yang Ping's talk. So hearing all that stuff and seeing how, and you know, repeatedly people saying like, yes, I mean, you, you hear me say it, but, you know, Philip said it, uh, Yang Ping is doing it. Uh, we need to do better crop production, you know, however we can better link uh, agriculture, whether it's at the field scale uh, or these uh, regional and global models that we uh, uh, are working on, you know, the possibilities were laid out. And if you're a modeler, you saw it. So, you know, you saw that Yang Ping is starting to, 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 uh, to make progress there. And I think she's working more at regional scales. You saw that Martin was showing these North American simulations and some of us are doing global simulations, but he was showing the very detailed water movement. Uh, and so, you know, the possibilities to add in uh, uh, agriculture to that crop modeling uh, could be nutrient transport. Uh, you know, it's a big job, but we have a lot of the pieces and we have a lot of the, we, oh, the other thing we heard a lot about today from, uh, uh, from Kevin and Carl was the you know the sort of data frameworks and the modeling frameworks, um, and even some integrated modeling from um, from Amin. And so there are a lot of there are a lot of pieces there, which is another sort of thrust, right? That that I think uh, we will probably well we will uh, convene subgroups on that because we have to do the modeling. One of the first times I met you, we were talking about modeling. Right, so you and Raju, and I don't remember if Dave was there, and you guys came over yeah. and we talked about a proposal. And at the core of it, we needed models that we didn't yet have. Maybe we put them in the proposal. Uh, but sure. but anyway, so that for me was uh, another like a you know really sort of exciting, uh, you know, or really exciting avenue that that I know that we can pursue and and do well in. You know, one thing I didn't see here in terms of modeling, and it's not my area, but you know, at Cornell, we had some people modeling, for example, solute and water movement in the rises for, you know, the root soil interface and things like that, mass flow diffusion, et cetera. And I, I, our people, I mean, we didn't have any talks on that. Or I don't know. Yeah. If, if so, uh, you know, that tends to be more the domain of the, of the groundwater guys. And it usually falls into groundwater flow and transport. And so this was, you know, this was distributed widely. Uh, yeah. But anyone who's in the conversation who knows about anyone who might be doing that kind of work, you know, if I'm speaking out of turn, uh, you know, maybe they just didn't, maybe they just didn't respond, or maybe we don't do a lot of uh, transport modeling. But Leon, that would be, uh, you know, Bing would be our uh, Tamo Steenhus. Okay. Yep. All so right. Think, think of it that way. I don't want to speak for Bing if he's on the call, but uh, yeah, we have those people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and um, so I, I thought um, there's going to be another section of this, which is kind of the what next section. But before we move on to that, I'd like to open this up if anybody else wants to comment like Dave and Jay and I have on, you know, what struck you about either today or over both of them? What are the things that stick out? I mean, feel free to, why don't we give people an opportunity to talk? Uh, um, and then we'll go on to I, I, a finishing section on, you know, where do we go from here? And uh, So yeah, don't don't everybody speak at once. Exactly. If you don't talk, it's just going to be us talking. <laughs> and you know, you know, Jay knows um, if there's a sonic void, I fill it. <laughs> so, so, so Leon, just 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 Steve, Steve Fisher here again. Just just one thing I'd I'd like to add, which I picked up on, from yesterday, and and I I think it's a, important to to many of these themes about sort of collaboration and working across the boundaries is the the sort of social science side of it and and the importance of thinking about that element um, when we're de designing you know the overall sort of vision about where, where we might go or particular themes uh, now I've I've you know had the benefit of talking a bit to uh, to to Peter Phillips about um, you know these things have been tried in the past in years gone by in the campus and and you know they haven't always gone anywhere and uh, uh, and and i think it's important that you know some of the uh, the sort of those social economic considerations are thought about early on and not after we've started doing you know the primary focus of of, of this that it's given a a, a sort of equal standing. I, I don't hold any particular brief for, for, for Peter and his group and, and, and that discipline, but 
you know, from, from my experience, you know, in the UK and here and in, in larger programs, you know, the importance of it, I, I think, is, is not to be underestimated. And, you know, I, I learned quite a lot from, from, from Jay in Bangladesh and talking around water and water regulation. And, and, and uh, um, you know, there, there's, there's huge issues there as, as, as well. It's all very well having nice techie solutions, but, you know, we've got to have the regulation and the, and the social acceptance too. I have a, a comment. Uh, just uh, obviously, I, I come from the CLS background, uh, atomic scale, and uh, you're. It's listening to talks about the geography and maps of uh, the world. It's a different length scale. So uh, my question was at the end of my presentation: What what can we do that is relevant? Uh, I heard uh, the question from Leona about the what happens in the, near the roots at the interface and so on. Do, do you have those questions? Do you need that kind of information for the modelers to see how water would in, interface with the roots? And that, what do we need to have that we don't have now beside beam time? I know it's an issue, right? <laughs> but ideally, what, what do we need as tools? Do we have what we need for the modeling at that scale, at the you know micron, submicron scale? Is a question for for all of you here, and maybe I don't want to have a discussion with everybody here because I think that it's a different land scale. But are, are there subgroups I, we could work with where we could develop techniques and get the answers you need? You know, I'm not a modeler, I'm a transport person. And I, and my sense is absolutely yes, that, uh, you know, I guess, I, I mean, I get not a modeler, but I get a sense that a model, you know, models can always be improved with better, you know, real world data or at least research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I can tell Jeff probably wants to make a comment on this, but, you know, my uh, uh, opinion, uh, John Luigi, is that, and I was saying this at some point today, I mean, we could really image the hell out of the, you know, the root zone water uptake and really understand that stuff and really put together a kick-ass model. I think part of it is we don't have the observations, uh, but if we had the observations and even what it like, you know, it was really taken by uh, Emil's comment about how like, yes, we could really, you know, image in situ, what the heck is going on? That's, I think we should go for that, right? And I think that informs models and it informs management and it informs science understanding. But Jeff, I wonder what you think about that, since you actually work in that zone. Which, which Jeff? Which Jeff? Which oh, sorry, McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'll, I'll pass for now. I, I really thought you're were, you're were referring to another Jeff there. <laughs> Jeff Jonah. Yeah. Have, have you? Have you been hitting with scotch already? <laughs> it's a little early. Or is it the CBD oil? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the comments I wanted to make, and I don't want to do this as a, as a cheerleader, but um, in, the, in hearing the talks, and I didn't hear all of them, but I heard a bunch of them uh, yesterday and today, um, I am astonishingly grateful that I'm part of this group. You guys are smart, and I'm very happy to, to hear the talks and to, and to know. You know, we have, we might not have all the tools, but it strikes me that we have the right people to do a, to make a big difference to the, uh, to, to the food, water, and access, and to understanding what happens in that thing where, where you either, if you're a soil science, you see, you know, I did this analogy once and people booed me out of the room, but if you're a soil scientist, then the, then the, the, the roots and the water for is it invades your domain and vice versa. But there are three things in this domain and they need to be understood together. And, and, and I'm just delighted to, uh, to hear the, 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 the comments and the level of the talks and to be part of this campus. Hey, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, need it, much to it, you. It a... I, I just, I, this is kind of like a challenge. We, we, we don't need, really need new tools. We just need to have people using the tools that we have. This campus has, you know, with Intravac and CLS and FCCS and, and the engineering school and, 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 and our two institutes, um, we have 
the, the basic, we have what is needed. Yeah, that's uh, a really good, that's a really good point. And so, you know, an important outcome from this workshop could be, you know, things that actually either more workshops, more discussion, small projects, you know, whatever, that actually start to use what we have here. Yeah, uh, Emil, I want to just mention that the tools you develop would be very useful to us, especially the neutron scattering. I know that's the best technology to image the water movement uh, to the plant. So we, you can actually track the water movement through that tool. I was looking for the other tools uh, in China. I know Canada don't have it, but after you talk about it, that makes me very excited. So we do need a physicist like you to develop those tools, which is beyond what a, as a soil scientist will be able to. Just don't have that uh, knowledge and expertise to develop those tools. Now you have it. And that's a, a really plus to the people like Jeff and me interested in root of water uptake. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, what could make this whole thing unique are the various imaging scales and approaches and techniques from, you know, the synchrotron and Emil's work all the way up to the remote sensing. And I guess it's it's thinking about what makes this group unique, what makes this university and this this grouping we have uh, unique to, to really, uh, you know, sell a proposal that hopefully we're going to uh, go after here in the coming months and years. It is, it is great. And maybe just one brief comment on Emil's remark. I'm struck, Emil, by how the, the, the landscape's changed in the last five years. Probably half the people on this call were hired in the last five years. So the university is a fundamentally different place than it was, you know, when I came uh, eight years ago. And that's terrifically exciting. Yeah, they brought in some of us really young, young bucks like uh, Jay and I. Oh yeah, well, you know they needed to lower the uh, the overall average age, so they brought us in. Yeah, yeah. So, I I just repeat what I said this morning, Jeff, that uh, the computer science is so much different than what you would imagine. What the computer yeah. science now, so they have three or four faculty, basically focus on displaying and the bioinformatics. Yeah. I thought that that's the task of Lee Young's group, right? <laughs> so uh, that's very uh, delighted to see those changes across the campus. Yeah. Yeah, that's an enormously important point. Thanks for making it. I, you know, in the early days of the CLS, we couldn't get uh, computer vision uh, working with us. Um, and, 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 and it's enormous. I mean, uh, we, we tried several initiatives to try to get IT working with the CLS and either it was our fault or, or theirs, I'm not going to say, but, but we couldn't get what we have now. We have an, an enormously capable group of people and all the right, all the, in my estimation, all the right talent pools. So I'd like to add a comment. Yeah, yeah go Is ahead. It okay? Raju. Yeah, go ahead, Raju. So we learned quite a bit uh, about the uh, things that uh, from the soil water uh, uh, perspective, and that uh, can also connect uh, our plant side perspective quite differently. I think uh, like Jeff and others pointed out, uh, we are uniquely positioned uh, to integrate uh, very multidisciplinary in a different way. And the, from the plant point of view, I think we discussed a lot about the soil, water, nutrient, uh, the external factors, how plants respond uh, to these conditions uh, are also quite unique. And the plants are also quite diverse. The vulnerable plants uh, and the adaptive plants, they respond quite, quite differently at the developmental uh, way, as, as physiological and at the molecular level. I think this gives us a, a very unique opportunity to dissect uh, what happening in the plant. I think that is the most important part uh, as an end point uh, for all the discussions, uh, how we can shape and design and model uh, uh, plant side of it. I think though the modeling that you are doing uh, is not at the same level in plants, but the recent uh, developments uh, uh, gives an encouraging uh, news uh, that you can also model plants 
using a very diverse tea collections so like what uh, uh, Steve Wisher is uh, uh, championing. Uh, I think there is what we are looking for is already exists in nature. I think it's a matter of how to bring uh, different things into the right combinations uh, and uh, to, I think to, to, uh, to be in a very, very unique position, not only for Canada or globally, uh, how we can shape the plant research and uh, physical, physical sciences, uh, computer science, soil science, uh, uh, and all these disciplines, uh, I think it's uh, very, very, very unique. Though we didn't talk that detail, I think lots happening in plants in response to the uh, these uh, diversity and variable conditions. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, the universities had a long history of involvement in inter international projects, and within the College of within the College of Agriculture. Uh, large projects in uh, Ethiopia, in Mongolia, and I think this project with Bangladesh is great. And I think that uh, really should be continuing to look for more of these opportunities uh, down the road that all of this expertise that we've got here at the University of Saskatchewan can be applied not only to address provincial and Canadian issues, but also other uh, areas of the world as well. So. I encourage people to continue to look for those types of international opportunities. Yeah, you know, I think that's a really great, uh, a really great point, um, Jeff. Uh, you know, a lot of us are involved in the different projects in different parts of the world, and there may actually be a lot of interest in expanding those projects and adding this in this kind of talent. So one of the things that, that came up um, was, uh, you know, and I, I volunteered uh, Sarah, who's in my group, a research scientist, to, uh, to take the lead on this. So, so we were talking about, like, you know, putting the pins on the map where we all work. And I think that was really focused on, uh, on maybe, you know, Saskatchewan and field sites right in, the, in this region. But uh, later I had a conversation with Palash about, like, what are the significant um, international collaborations that are going on we should be doing that within our institutes we should be doing that with this group you know find out what are the other things where people are involved that are you know doing stuff and that have the potential uh, to right to uh you know to bring this suite of of skills and tools to to bear on you know, different parts of the world i i, I want to add I, something I, there's a a, a, a comment in the chat here from uh, from Margo Hurlbert saying, uh, thanks for the comment on social science, Steve. I think I've read to Steve Vischer. I'd be interested in participating on projects and adding a social science perspective. Building it at the front would be ideal. Yeah, it was from Steve's comments of, uh, of it being, uh, you know, uh, you know, on an equal footing with the uh, with the more hard science research. So if anybody has Wait, one. social science is still hard science. It's let's just call it <laughs> physical science. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> sure. yeah. I knew as soon as I said that, I wish I could have retracted it. Can't do it. it. <laughs> no, no, you gotta retract it. It's, it's like email. Hard. You say, it's harder to do, is what we say too. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I think it is. No, it's super valuable, Margot. And I don't know if we've met before. Did we meet, like I gave that talk, I gave that Tansley lecture, did, were you there? Did we meet then? Actually, I proposed as the lecturer, but no, I was away writing with the IPCC at the time. Well, so the was type climate report was due right then and it was land, food and climate that I was working on and I'd proposed yeah. you, but then I, I couldn't even attend, so. Well, thank you so much, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think your time was better spent, uh, <laughs> but we should talk sometime about, some of this groundwater, you know, some of the groundwater stuff that I work on. And I mean, there's a huge social science. Like we just did a uh, new frontiers proposal. It was, uh, the pre-proposal was rejected, but we'll carry on. Um, there's one too, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just like that, ours. ours was, uh, it was considered, it was supposed to be high risk, high reward. And ours was like medium to low risk. So I don't think it ever had a chance, even though I spent like, you know, months working on it. Was yeah. that the transformations, Jake? Yeah, transformations. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So I think we would be better working together than divided because I worked for months on a transformation and uh, we were ranked very good across the board and uh, saying we're not going on. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, that's right. And I even missed it when I read it. I was like, oh, what's the problem? What's the problem? And it was right there in the first couple of sentences. Like, well, overall, this was ranked as sort of like, you know, medium risk. 
might have even been low to medium risk. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. No, no, we should we should talk because we wrote right in high risk, high risk, and um, again, yeah. it was very good to excellent, and no idea. Yep. yep. No, okay. it's tough competition when you're you know looking across all disciplines, especially you know the soft sciences like the social sciences. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 the hard oh, social hey, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm thinking. Um, should we? Um, I mean, we can. Only, we don't need to stop at five, but uh, I know it's been a long day. Um, should we move on to uh, you know uh, you know some discussion on what's next? We can always come back to some of these discussions too. I do, and before we move on, as Jean Luigi, I'd really like to. I, I, I've been here four years, and we've and we've had a number of meetings. We want to get more involved with the CLS. I was thinking now that you, you're on board. You know, COVID's gotten in the way, and the CLS was down. I get too busy, but maybe if you and I and Chitra and Emil can meet, we have a postdoc now, a good one, where he's a research associate working both potentially in the CLS and the, and the cyclotron. So it'd be good to meet with you and discuss, you know, sure. how we can move that forward. Yeah, no, COVID, uh, I think it didn't help a lot of people here. No, no. It's it's after starting. Yeah. But okay. so Leon, I want to I want to challenge you to think about, or, you know, you can work with me to figure out who from our side should also be at that meeting. Because oh, yeah, you're if right. we're going to be it's, imaging, we got to be thinking about right, it's not just roots. That's what and, the roots uh, want. Well, we have what you want. Well, Emil, you know, you and John Luigi. I mean, you guys best decide. It. But yeah, definitely. You know, I'm interested. Well, I'm interested in imaging the water, the roots. If we can image solutes, um, you know, elements in the in the root itself too. But uh, yeah, let's let's make that. Uh, Maybe that should be one of the subgroups of this, of this, uh, of this nexus should be, you know. The, sure. The so maybe we should there. talk about that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's been a small group of people that have been saying that, uh, 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 do most of the talking, but I wonder if we make a last pass through, you know, people want to say something, want to propose, you know, their voices haven't been heard, um, because ours are too loud. Uh, suggest something, you know, as a follow up, you know, one thing I want to make clear, and, and maybe I'll say it at the end, I'll save it for the end. But you know, there are things small and large that can come out of this. And we may be talking about some of the medium to large things, but there's a lot of small things we can help with, too. I'll, I'll save that for the end. But let's hear if anyone else has something they want to say. Yeah, can I just suggest that I will probably reach out to everyone through Palage to get some uh, information about if anybody is doing any project in, in on the farm or wetland and if they can identify the latitude longitude of that area. And then also the type of data they have access to or collected and for what period of time. And I then um, put that put a pin for everybody in a different color so you can click on it and, and then see whose project is where. Even if it's global, I can make the map global. So yeah, would yeah, that yeah. be useful for everyone? I think it'd be you really useful. Very, very. And, and yeah. if, if for everyone, Sarah, Sarah has that also in a, in a chat co comment here too. So you can- Yeah, just in case if yeah. you haven't seen it. So that would be probably a follow up uh, from me and Plush. Yes. And, and I see another comment, I know in terms of having other people speak, uh, Von Katesh is asking or suggesting, you know, maybe a interdisciplinary PhD program, certificate program, exchange of scholars, something like that, some kind of formal um, kind of multidisciplinary training program. So I don't know if, Ben Kadesh, if you want to say any more about that, if you're still here. Um. Yeah, thanks, uh, Liana. Uh, this is an excellent forum between the two global uh, elements that the uh, world needs and uh, leadership we have. I agree with most of the discussion we had. What, uh, not all of it? <laughs> uh, most of it, yes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there are people, I would like to repeat and point out uh, to the leaders out there, there are people make use of uh, their talents and uh, identify the rolling wheel and then the, it, it stares automatically. I think it's just a timing and as you said, low hanging, small and long term, I think there are equal opportunities. I have worked on major MOUs on campus since 2002. I am here on how to set up MOUs 
with governments and that probably will be added value to deal with DFAT, D or uh, uh, ICARDA or a bunch of scholars in Mexico. We often get uh, students passionate about a particular topic, but when it comes to me, most of the faculty, what we do, oh, this is not my area. This is not where I have current funding. So either I delete the email or do not respond. So, but there is a catch that uh, we can also motivate each other by formulating a group and formalizing the action teams and uh, activities so that it won't get lost. Otherwise it will go to McGill or UBC or Toronto. That's 100% what I've seen. So let's get them here to Saskatoon because we have everything what we can offer. So that's uh, my idea of interdisciplinary. Uh, we have some models out there to exchange with you. For I'm looking at more training the scholars for future generation and yeah. retention programs to, to compete our growing industry here so they don't have to look for jobs after they're done with their graduation. So this is what I was going after. Well, you are, you're a fountain of ideas and I really, uh, really appreciate it. And I had noted before when you were talking about the certificates and the training programs, but I like what you said just before, uh, before that, which was uh, formalize the action teams and the, uh, and the ideas. Once you do that, then you can write a create, right? Then you can, you know, we could put out an ad for visiting scholars and, you know, the institutes could throw money into it and we could say, here's some projects that, you know, we have available that are on the food water nexus. Um, so yeah, really, really good idea. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shay, if, if I could just, just, just build on that very briefly, because I, I, I didn't mention it when I spoke about Bangladesh, but, but the, the, the training opportunities um, and, and exchange opportunities that come with that sort of program are, are really quite, quite broad and just, just to give you one example of a you know a current discussion that's taking place is to try and persuade my tax that that um, Bangladesh should be added to their list of international countries and then you have a mechanism whereby funding is in place for the both countries and then if we have a program it's it's so much easier to follow through and to and to um, you know either have a cohort of students or 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 a a postdoc exchange or, or even funding for postdocs. It, it's um, it, it's the, the, the training side of all these discussions is, 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 a, is an added opportunity we shouldn't over, overlook. So I think it's, it's a great point that Ben, ben, ben De Cash has made. Okay. Well, listen, in terms of getting, uh, you know, involvement from uh, other people that haven't spoken yet, I'd, I'd like to also kind of open it up to what's next. I'll just make a couple of comments and I'll be quiet. I mean, I liked uh, Jay's idea from yesterday about, uh, you know, what's one thing we can do is take, let's take a week to digest what we've, we've learned or been exposed to. You maybe go back and look at some of the talks or the, or the videos, but, you know, but not a significant period of time. And then it, it, we encourage people to, to provide their ideas of what's next. And that could be, from how, how do we, you know, what are the ideas about how do we keep this going? How do we meet, uh, you know, when you have 50 people? Should we be thinking about subgroups? I mean, I know there's going to be some one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two or whatever, small groups that may nucleate, um, but there's also the potential for that big grand challenge kind of project like we talked about, maybe on one or several field sites. So anyway, I think they take a little time, and then I guess maybe we could ask maybe Palash and Hassan to then reach out, remind people, nudge them. I know I need a lot of nudging to get feedback. And then I know Dave was talking before we, um, we, we, we met for this uh, discussion about another possibility we could generate a report from this that maybe we have a, a small group of people that could gather that information if they're, if they're willing to be volunt to volunteer or be, <laughs> be volunteered by others to maybe take that information to produce some kind of do a summary document that we at least we have something that we can start building on. Just a few ideas, you know, we've we've talked about the multi-site or 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 you know intensive work on, of a number of different disciplines on sites. We've talked about um, networks. We've talked about stewardship, system-based research, etc. Um, anyway, I think you know what's next. But people have their uh, any ideas or suggestions now. You know, beyond what I just kind of blurted out there in a semi-incoherent fashion. 
so Leon, one suggestion I'd have would be a subgroup focused on the modeling side. You know, we heard people talk about mechanistic models for crop versus hydrology, you know, there's machine learning models. And I think, you know, just having a more technical focus group to talk about what are the challenges there and how to, what are the intersections across these modeling techniques would be, would be a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think that's really good, Ian. And I, I like the modeling stuff and the data side too. I thought there would be, uh, you know, an obvious subgroup, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, I was really happy to see all that stuff come together today. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's just selfishly speaking, to me, this is like, uh, uh, we have the pieces. Um, and if we don't have the pieces, we need to go out and get the pieces. Yeah. I'd like to uh, offer a, an idea. Um, SENS, um, Ag Bio, and, and, and the Global Institute for Food and Security have been discussing the possibility of creating a certificate in um, sustainable food security. Um, that would be to complement the, the existing programs in water and energy security. Um, so if other people want to engage, uh, uh, Van Kaddish, um, uh suggested that he would be interested in participating, but anybody else who wants to participate in that uh, discussion about academic programs to parallel this research effort, um, uh, please contact me. I would like to uh, increase the size of our uh, I, th I think that sounds great, Dave. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about, someone today, maybe it was Emil was saying, like he likes to use the term human security. And when we were talking about that, when Irina was on board, at some point we talked about That's maybe having a core point. of classes that the, the, the energy, food, water people, you know, maybe there's one core or two core classes that they took that, that, show, the, that show the links. But, but anyway, glad to know that that's moving forward. Uh, can I add uh, something here? So uh, from my perspective, uh, our meeting, uh, I guess this last two days, lack the input from animal science. And, oh, and, wow. Uh, I forget and, all about those guys. <laughs> and uh, the fruit trees. And so those are horticulture and the animal science for the processing. Guess uh, oh, I wow. try. I try to get the people to involve, but the people get it busy, and uh, so they did not participate. But I think that's important. Uh, the is a part of food water nexus, because yeah, uh, I agree. Have... I Go agree, Ben. You know, um, uh, Doug Freeman was one of the first people I talked to when I first got here. I made the rounds and went and talked to Doug, and and um, you know, at least we talked about it. Uh, so anyway, I, I agree. I mean, that's just left out. And I didn't even think about the fruit tree people and where, I mean, where are they? I they mean, are, what, like in a it, different department or what? In, in animal, so they, uh, the plant science has a small portion of horticulture dealing with fruit trees and the vegetables. And uh, the animal science, the department of animal science, they have past people dealing with the pasture land and animal productions and, and okay uh, so that's an action that's an action item right to bring yeah. to bring those folks in because you know in terms of climate change right i mean there's a lot of uh there's a lot of methane that's like coming from cows oh, and yeah. animal agriculture Absolutely. yeah tremendous right tremendous water use right yep. uh, you can uh, see from new zealand what the new zealand is doing they basically tackle those uh, uh, cow production and those related to the environment and water and irrigation is all in there and different kind of management strategies. Oh, that's very good model that. Uh, yeah, so you know, one thing that I think is important to recognize um, is that you can't make people play, play with you if they don't wanna play with you, <laughs> but you know, who knows if, you know, you may, I don't know who you reached out to, but it, it's probably worth a couple of attempts, right? Yeah, yeah. And then if they don't want to participate, that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, two. Mute, any other comments? Um, 
in a, in a uh, in, well, again, any, anything else anybody wants to share? Because if not, I'd say let's, um, Palash and Hassan, let's, you know, I think we should reach out to the group to, you know, in, in the next week to in a week or more, you know, week, one to two weeks, get us feedback about this meeting where they, where, you know, any ideas for, they can range from across the, uh, the spectrum of different possibilities. But, you know, we want to keep this going. So certainly there's, uh, so the, we do need feedback on, on what's next. And, uh, and, uh, and I do like Dave's idea of, um, you know, maybe gathering that information plus, you know, what we've all learned and uh, maybe a, a, a small group putting together a you know, a, 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 you know, not an onerous job, a job. Don't, don't a, be afraid. A, a don't be report. afraid to say that we need to produce a report. Of course, we're going to produce a report, right? I mean, that's like, in terms of outcomes, we have to have that report. Right. This would be a uh, tremendous yeah. failure. Because, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. we have to, exactly. With a, with, a, with a workshop like this, I think it would be, a, you know, I don't want to say it would be a failure because if we don't do it, uh, then we're going to look like a failure, but the but the workshop was already a success. I just wanted to say a few things. First of all, the workshop's already been a success because, as Jeff keeps saying, I met all these people I didn't even know existed, including people in my own building, which uh, is embarrassing. Um, so yeah, Palash has posted uh, the the videos, and and probably uh, Palash, we should well we should definitely put all the. Uh, um, PowerPoints up there, up there too. Um, so, like Leon said, we'll go through and start doing some summary work. But I do think, you know, a lot of people there was a lot of enthusiasm, and so you know, let's get inspired to start thinking about things and keep your brains churning away. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll ping you to help you keep keep things churning. But you know, adding new collaborations, you know, again, you know, to let's get inspired to do things that are small and large. You're just reaching out to, you know, one or two people. Let's start thinking about those follow-up workshops. Ian already talked about um, the modeling stuff. We're going to do, you know, Bangladesh. We need to do something on networking the sites. Um, you know, at some point we have to start thinking about bigger integrative projects. And so that could be Bangladesh. It could be irrigation. It could be whatever. Um, you know, bigger picture, at some point, obviously, we need to be thinking about these bigger proposal opportunities like the, like the CFRAFs and whatever else is, is coming down the line. Uh, we want to be prepared with some, some good ideas. I think we need to start thinking about foundations, too. And uh, one of the things that was circulating around the news today was the uh, Bezos Foundation. They made huge grants. And so I want to get with our advancement and with Karen's office, because it's not easy to get information. So it might be easier for the university to get that to get that information. Uh, you know, another thing I wanted to say is we're talking about big things and, and bigger things, um, and you know, things that you can't do on your own. But you know, we can also help out. The institutes can also help out with small things. So help writing proposals. I mean, that's why we're here. Uh, help organizing workshops on things that are even related or or not, but you still might be an institute member or want to become a member. Uh, these are the services that that we provide. We have existing infrastructure. We have, you know, vehicles and and ski mobiles and and sites that, although they're not, you know, they're not networked together yet, we still have a lot of sites where you can do research, and we can just, you know, even simple things like helping you connect to colleagues. You forgot someone's name. Who was that person at the workshop who said this about social science? Oh, that was Margot. Uh, so. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I thought the time went by really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it was a good two days. Yep. So, all right. Well, uh, anybody, any final comments, Dave? No, I'm, I think it's really great. I, I hope that we can do so, something like this, perhaps on a quarterly basis, probably not two days, but maybe an afternoon. Uh, to continue engagement. Otherwise, uh, I think it's, it's very easy to sort of lose connections over time if we, especially if we're each huddled in our own um, office, home offices, it, it, it's hard to, hard to maintain connectivity without uh, uh, having something scheduled. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. If we just keep it to like 90 minutes or something like that, 
and we get together every few months and hopefully there'll be some other subgroups going. Uh, so I think that sounds like a plan. We'll be, we'll be back in touch, right guys? Yep, yeah. And if people have anything that's, you know, they think is important for this, they could, you know, nucleate that, hey, let's get together. I'll spend 15 minutes telling you about this, you know, so. Uh, um, Leon, it looks like you uh, upgraded hotel rooms. Yep, yeah, it's definitely a better. Well, it's nice to be able to take a shower in warm water. That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. I, I have one quick comment. Um, just in, in relation, I thought it was a good point bringing up uh, horticultural crops, especially if we are going to be going down the route of trying to align with the irrigation plan uh, for, for the province, because that is going to open up a whole scope of additional crops rather than the traditional dryland row crops that we're used to working with, um, canola weeds and, and pulse crops. So um, yeah, it just <laughs> yeah, that's pros and cons to that, I think, um, in terms of uh, research opportunities, because it will bring up a whole range of other, other, other crops um, yeah. in, into the portfolio. I think it's an opportunity actually, um, but um, uh, I think it needs to be in the mix. The other thing is, um, when we, um, Raju alluded to this earlier, when we're talking about the plant at the plant level, um, uh, we have some fantastic resources on campus in terms of, of um, germplasm resources uh, and, and structured, uh, genetically structured populations, uh, which have been the foundational to the, to the breeding programs and, and, and scientific research. Um, all these things need to be genotyped and we can do that at scale and all these things need to be phenotyped and we can do some of that at, at scale. The one thing that we can't really do at scale is kind of like that micro level. So using the CLS and, and using the cyclotron. And I know there's been some strides in, in getting the throughput of samples through those platforms over the last few years. But uh, I think if that can be really... Um, um, I think made routine future, then we'll be then we'll be out the capability to think of getting these data sets at different scales that on mass, right, for whole populations, and then then you can actually link everything together at the genetic level through through to um, the the phenotype level, all, all all types of phenotypes. I think that's a great comment, Andy. Thanks very much. And okay. Jeff was talking about, Jeff mentioned uh, that we have a distinguished lecture series and we could focus on food water. Um, so this, uh, so actually there is one going on uh, right now that's in theory focused on food water. That's the one that uh, Bruno Basso spoke in. I, we're actually co-sponsoring it, Jeff. Uh, uh, Bruno Basso spoke on it, Christy just spoke in it. And, and uh, yeah, in theory it's, it's, it's food and water, but you know, this could be more specific, Jeff. So, Let's talk about that because I, I think it's a good idea. Perhaps the, the university one was a little bit too broad so that people might not have even realized it was food water. We could actually call it like food water nexus, you know, series 2021. Yeah. Yeah. GIFS has a distinguished lecture series too. So yeah, it would make sense to, uh, you know, from yes. the co-sponsor. Yeah, co -sponsor. Yep. I guess it's been a while since we've had one, right? Yeah. 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 I guess so. Uh, uh, we we kind of put it on hold while we were weathering the COVID storm. Yeah, yeah so. ours is ours is virtual, and yeah. so it's been going it it's been going be, yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Palash, did yeah. you want to say some uh, organizational things? Yeah, just to um, shed some light on Bing and what Andrew say and uh, Andrew said about uh, bringing in the animal science and other folks. I mean. These recordings will be available online and you guys can share those and they can see if they're uh, interested in anyone's talk and the profiles, right? So uh, that might steer some interest as well. Thanks, Palash. Uh, I think we should wrap it up, folks. I, I personally I have a 4.30 meeting, uh, so I have to rest my brain. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everyone. That was a that was a great experience. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it really was. Thank you, Jay, for organizing this. And yep. thanks. Uh, our Palash pleasure. Thank thanks you. for your help. Yep. Thanks. Thank well. you very much. See you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you guys. Yeah. Bye. Great meeting everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.